All right, here I am with the explanation of the breadboard. So we have three displays. Um, yeah, you know that this, this is the second hand, this is the minute hand, this is the hour hand. So each one of these displays is followed up by three ICs, which help um, just display the number it needs to. So the first two ICs here are the same for each one. These are CD 4543. So basically, um, on the t on the bottom you have lowercase a, b, c, and d's, which send binary numbers through the IC to the top, which um displays it in seven digits because um since each one of the thingies that displays has seven lines um they have seven digits at the top a b c d e f and g which um send the signals into one of the numbers so for example here the right cd 4543 sends it to this number and the left one sends it to this number so that's how that works the bottom it basically converts binary into seven segment display sending it there but where does it get the binary numbers you ask it gets it from this one cd 4518 so what CD4518 does, it has a system filled with clock, enable, and resets. So the bottom controls one of the numbers. It, like basically the bottom sends binary numbers to this one, and the top sends it over to this one. Sends the numbers over to the A, B, C, and Ds, right? So how it gets the number is, for example, on the top, whenever the enable switches from a positive to a negative charge, it will take the number that it is sending to this IC, which will, in case, take the number that the IC is sending over here. And same for the bottom. But for the bottom, it's whenever the clock ticks from one to zero, from positive to negative, that it sends the signal. So basically this thing, it just receives um, switch signals, both the enable and the clock, which sends them over to the display, increasing the number by one each time it gets this change in power. The question is, where does it get this change in power from? Well, it gets it from this IC over here. Yes, no, I am skipping this IC for now. It gets it from this IC, CD4046. So this this brown thing over here is a capacitor. It generates a bunch of small charges and releases them millions of times per second. And each time it releases that charge, it will increase. It will send a different charge over here. It will basically it will make this IC tick. You know, every time it every time it releases a charge, which is a million times per second. So the way you slow it down is using these. These are also CD4518s, which are the same as the one we used over here in order to slow it down. Basically, it's a system of wired circuits. You don't really need to know what it does, but it basically just relays the signal over here a bunch of times using the variable resistor to slow down the ticking of the capacitor so you can get it to one per second for this one. And that's pretty much what that does. It's nothing too nothing too interesting you know um but see the ic i skipped over here before is cd4081 this is just this ic isn't as interesting as the other ones it is just an and gate you know so what it does is it prevents it receives two signals from this cd it receives signals from a and b so that way once it hits five, instead of going to six, it sends a signal to the reset, telling it to go back to zero instead of six for the mint hand, because you don't want the seconds to go above 59. You want them after 59, you want it to reset back to zero, because that's how clock work, clocks work, right? Anyway, each, also each IC here has their own VSS and VDD, which are connected to negative and positive respectively to give charge throughout the whole circuit. And then, so basically, these three CDs, the first three I was talking about before, how they send signals through binary numbers, um, they just do it the same for each one. But you see these green and orange wires, the yellow ones, they help connect these ICs all the way to the AND gate because that will help them, that will let them, it will allow them to receive the signal from the capacitor, which will tick them at a slower rate due to the way the AND gate functions. You know, it tells them, go slow down. You know, you're a minute hand, you're an hour hand. So you're not going to be ticking at the speed of, um, you're not going to be ticking at the speed of a second hand, you know, because that's just how it works. Um, you don't really need to know exactly how this part works. You just need to know that it does. Honestly, um, if you guys have any further questions on how this breadboard works, um, feel free to ask me. I don't think this was the most in-depth description. 
I'm not 100% sure. I feel like I might have missed out on some stuff. But for the most part... Oh, oh, for this part. Um, this clock, it's weird since it's in the middle. Um, you just basically, you have to reverse the charge. So here you send a positive charge to light things up. But because it's, um, I don't know why. It just kind of is that the phase has to be negative. So you send a negative charge to light up these, which is very weird. I think it has to do with the breadboards just being reversed or something. Um, I think that's about it, though. I don't think we need anything else. I feel like I've explained everything thoroughly. Um, basically, how it works, these three ICs focus on sending the signal there. And then the following ICs focus on making sure it resets at the right point and that it ticks at one per second. And that's... That's really all I gotta say, honestly. I can't think of much else. Um, I hope I hope this all makes sense. I don't know, I'm just kinda recording this real quick. Um, so y'all can know it. Or if anyone else from future years, you know, next year maybe they'll stumble across this video. Get myself some good old money. <laughs> okay, but, um, yeah. That's it. Right? That's it. Alright. <laughs> Hope you guys understand. Um, if you have any questions, ask away. Ask away.